Hi, we're the engineering team for Crew 75. I'm Namal. And I'm Tom. Welcome to the Green Hab, also very important for the functioning of the system. This is the communications dish, also very important to the system. This provides 15 minute delayed access to all of our uh, status reports and our friends at home. We're required to send reports once a day. It's a great system, satellite internet. Again, I don't know what he's talking about. This parabolic dish hasn't been working for a month. We can't even use it to eat on. These are the solar cells, also very important to the system. These solar cells provide half the power to the entire Mars Desert Research Station. I have no idea what he's talking about. Those things aren't even hooked up yet. So we're approaching the generators now, and as you can see, it's very noisy. It's one of the reasons that we have to put the uh, generator far away from the HAB to reduce the noise pollution. Uh, for the analog system here at the Mars Desert Research Station, we're using diesel generators to provide us with the energy. However, on Mars, we'd be using a nuclear reactor. Again, for the nuclear reactor, we'd have to be a safe distance away from the HAB so that we don't get any radiation poisoning or any other ill effects. This is Casper. It's our main generator. It provides a lot of power to the system. That's a lot quieter now. So if you come around here, the oil, the oil stick is right here. What you have to do is grab yourself a piece of rag, just like an, just like checking the oil of your car. Just have to pull it out, wipe the stick clean. And what you're looking for is if you can see the hash marks right here, you want to have the oil level in between these hash marks. If it's too low, you got to add some oil. And as you can see, the oil level is just a bit below full, so we're okay for today. So now we're going to turn on the generator. There's actually a couple, you need two people to do this. Uh, one person needs to man the switch here. To turn the switch on here, what you have to do is switch the knob over to prime and run, and then you got to hold it for five seconds. After five seconds, you, it's just like turning on a car. you got to switch it all the way to a start, and once you hear the engine click over, you can let go. The second person reaches in to toggle the choke. This is important so you increase the fuel to air ratio. Once it's started, we need to just ease it in a little bit to make sure that it's running. So we're about to run through the startup procedure. Nimal's about to actually turn it to the start position. Here's prime and run. And start. <coughs>
tank, also very important to the system. The propane is used for environmental heating, cooking, and for heating water. We need to check it every day to find out if we need to get a refill. To do that, we lift up the hatch, and we take a look at the gauge. You'll see we're not too bad at around 75% full. We don't use a lot of propane, so it doesn't get filled regularly. Full. This is our gasoline tank. We use this to fuel the ATVs. It's also a very important system. We need to make sure that we have sufficient gas quantities so that we can perform our EVAs during the week. We can check the, temp the uh, level of gas in here in a couple of ways. You can knock. And where there's a noise change, that indicates the uh, gas line. You can also feel for the temperature. Where it turns colder, that's also the gas line. So you can see we're right around here somewhere. Time for more fuel. So you'll notice that Namal and I aren't wearing spacesuits. That's because technically we're inside right now. You'll see the pathway of rocks. Anything within the rocks we consider to be inside. It's not worth building that much extra structure just for pathways. In fact, you can get to any of the core systems of the HAP inside without having to put a suit on. That includes engineering, behind us is the green HAP, and above us on the hill is the observatory. All this can be done without the suits on, but the second you step over that line, you need fresh air and protection from radiation. So you've seen the generator outside. Now we're inside the hab where the inverter is. This is what helps distribute the power to the rest of the systems within the hab. Uh, it's very important for us to come in every morning and also before we go to bed to make sure that uh, the readings on the hab are within the settings that we have determined to be safe. We have to get the battery voltage, we have to get the current input, and we also have to take the load that's being drawn from the inverter. Uh, it's also important to check the temperature of the batteries. All that can be done by just playing with the dials right here. So this meter measures the draw and the load on the system. The key thing we're looking at here is how many amps are being pulled. We've got 7.2 amps right now. That's perfectly reasonable. We're told we can go as high as 30, but we like to keep it a lot lower to keep within our safety boundaries. We have to be careful with how much we, how much power and electricity we're using at a time. We have lots of laptops, lights, and other things plugged in. We have to be very careful with certain systems like vacuums and microwaves. They draw a lot of amperage. We're told that the microwave draws 10 amps. If we were, get, if we were to get too close to our upper limit of 30, that could ruin the entire system, and we'd have to do some repairs then. So these are the ATV systems. They're used for our long-range reconnaissance missions. Uh, they allow us and they provide us with the mobility to traverse long distances. In the inevitable quest for life on Mars. Without the engineering team, that wouldn't be possible. 